So disability is absolutely central to understanding both the history and the workings of media. And there are several reasons for this. One is that uh, no human being actually conforms to whatever normal is supposed to be. And disability studies is the place where the idea of normal is most thoroughly and rigorously critiqued. The second thing is to say that uh, disability stigma still animates a lot of the cultural theory that we encounter around um, around media and around the senses, right? So uh, we say, you know, people are deaf to arguments. They're blind to the implications of their research, uh, things like that. The only reason those terms mean anything is because um, they are associated with negative stigmas. In one case, blindness being unaware, unawareness, right? Deafness being um, tuned out or not intersubjectively connected, right? When in fact, you know, deaf people have a, uh, especially capital D deaf uh, people, have a, a very rich sort of cultural history and set of cultural practices and even very interesting practices around sound, um, uh, you know, and uh, of course you could say the same thing around blindness. So, so stigmas often drive um, the way sight and hearing and other senses are actually used in uh, metaphorical terms in, in scholarship, right? Uh, we say political agency can be described as having a voice, but what if you don't have a voice? Um, and this is one of the points I made in the, in the audible past. Um, disability is also at the center of our his the history of our technologies. From um, Alexander Graham Bell's experiments with the phonautograph to try to teach deaf children to speak as if they could hear, which led to his development of the telephone, to AT&T's use of hard of hearing subjects, a subject Mara Mills writes about, um, to... Uh, um, the uh, the uh, blindfolding and uh, yeah to blindfolding and putting in wheelchairs of perfectly normate people in Boston um, in an urban study in the 1960s, which led to the modern concept of soundscape, where people were asked to listen to the city um, by pretending to be uh, disabled so that they would be supposedly more in touch with the acoustic environment. Right. This is. Um, this is the, the equivalent of, you know, putting on blackface and trying to pass as, as, as black. So disability is central to concepts and sound studies. It's central to the history of media and media practices. Um, and it's also a, a place for potentially great insight. Um, I'm fond of pointing to the work of someone like uh, John Durham Peters and saying secular scholars since ed existentialism have not done a very good job of dealing with human finitude and human mortality. And one of the very few places where that is seriously considered is disability studies, which is all about different kinds of finitude and different modalities both of embodiment and um, inhabiting one's own subjectivity. So... Um, there's a way in which um, disability studies helps disallow some of the most, I think, simplistic and naive critiques of modern sonic practices. It also, I think, radically challenges us to understand our own senses differently. So, for instance, um, as Mara Mills's work has shown, the definition of normal hearing comes from the study of New York City school children in the 1930s. No adult, by that measure, by, ev by that measure, every adult is hearing damaged. And so when we say, when we listen to something, this is true in visual culture studies as well, when we talk about art history or film studies, so much humanistic work that's done around the interpretation of culture is based in the idea that the scholar that is, is in complete command of their senses and they know what they see and they know what they hear. Well, if we know anything from the history of the senses, it's that we don't know what we see. We don't know what we hear, right? Our eyes and our ears are filters. They are, if we want to be uh, Friedrich Kittler about it, uh, they are signal processing devices themselves. So um, a notion of the faculties of hearing, of seeing, and of speech as limited as 
as subjects constantly confronting the limits of them would give us a very different sort of phenomenology of culture. Um, and that's a place where I think the insights of disability studies really need to be generalized back out to all subjects, including the subjects who do not think that they are disabled or will ever be disabled, even though all humans are eventually encompassed within or encapsulate, even though all humans are eventually um, uh, invited into the category of the disabled one way or another.